Monday. So let's open uh, your week in a proper way. Tell you exactly what you need to know before you started. Now we're in the second quarter of the year and uh, with all the goals set at the beginning of the year, there is a need to do a checklist and find how you can speed up your career advancement goals and make some milestones for yourself despite the fact that the pandemic has told down most progress in the world. Now today, to take us through how we can speed up our career advancement uh, we're joined by Dr. Mary Mugo, who is a business lady, an author, and a consultant, among other adorable hats that she wears. Dr. Mary Mugo, how are you doing? Good morning. Good morning, Simba, and how are you today? Fantastic, I can't complain. Let's let's get into it. Dr. Mary, uh, always insightful to have you on board. It's time again to review the goals towards career advancement and now being in the second quarter of the year. How does one ensure that he or she is on the right track and focus on those goals that you set at the beginning of the year? Uh, thank you, Simba. It is important for any person to ensure that they continuously monitor and they continuously evaluate their goals. This We are actually assuming, Simba, that the goals were smarter. And therefore, any person who had goals, whether career goals or any other, by now should be evaluating the same. Remember, monitoring is continuous. Evaluation is at a specific time. Yes. Therefore, if you've got to know whether you're in the right track, it is important for you to daily monitor your progress. And now that it is a quarter of the year is gone, then it is important for you to sit down and evaluate your goals. You need to ask yourself, am I moving in the right direction? What is it that I've achieved this far? Have I been concentrating on what is most important? You, Simba, you just saying that uh, the pandemic may have changed a lot of things. And therefore, the question everyone should be asking themselves is, have I been concentrating on that one thing that is so important for me to achieve my goals? Because it would have been important if you monitored your goals every other day to actually discover that you may not achieve all of them. And therefore, concentrate on that one goal that is exciting, that one goal that is stimulating you and motivating you towards your career achievement. So, Simba, we, people need to review their goals and they need to concentrate on that one goal that they know is important for their career growth. Yes. Dr. Mary Mogo, this is a question that I got once I shared the scope of a conversation this morning. Let me just chip it inside here since we're talking about it, that you need to focus on what is exciting. What sort of goals, what sort of career goals should somebody have set for themselves within this COVID-19 pandemic? Sort of, this is the question I was asked to, 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 to put across to you, is there a COVID-19 oriented career goal and is that what we should have set at the beginning of the year? See, but we need to understand that we operate in an environment that is dynamic. Yes. And therefore, that is why it is important for you to continuously monitor and do things as you look at the environment around you. And Simba, there are people whose career has become better because of COVID. Because you've got to look at opportunities in the environment. So the idea that there's COVID and careers have gone down is not true. There are careers that have gone up. And therefore, as a person, what you need to do as you set those goals is you've got to look at the environment in which you're operating. For example, Simba, if you're working in a... a a TV station, wow. things have changed. We are now doing more of uh, online things. Therefore, you've got to continuously learn. You've got to continuously upgrade your skills. In this corona period, we are, most of us are working from home. The question we should be asking ourselves is, how am I using that time when I'm working from home? 
Am I disciplined enough to ensure that the career, that the goals that I set, I'm able to upgrade my skills to be able to achieve them? So in this COVID time, Simba, you've got to continuously upgrade your skills. You've got to continuously learn. And I hope any one of us, as we set our career goals, learning was somewhere among them. So you've got to keep on learning. Read books. You know, listen to YouTube channels. Listen to Metro Metropol TV in some of these uh, things that you're speaking. And then that way, you'll be able to upgrade yourself and you'll be able to achieve that one goal that is important for you. And of course, what is important to a journalist may not be what is important to a teacher, yes. I think. So yes. you've got to look at that that goal that is important to you, that is working towards your achieving your career goals. So keep learning Simba. Keep upgrading your skills. So since we are also talking about that, uh, Dr. Mary Mugo, just before we continue deeper into this conversation, that adjusting your goal doesn't necessarily mean that you're failing at it or the way that you set it at the beginning of the year was not smart. And we're understanding that, well, your goals were smart. Simba, when you reevaluate your goals, it does not mean you're failing. Yes. It actually means that you know what you're doing. Because you're saying that as even you look at your career growth, the environment is changing. Even as you look at what you said, changing what you said is actually strategic. You see, in strategy, we say that you've got to keep on changing depending on your environment. You cannot stick. In fact, Simba, organizations that have stuck to what they said last year or in the beginning of this year all closed down because things are changing. So when you change your goals, when you evaluate your goals, doesn't mean you're failing. You're simply adapting to the environment in which you're operating. Spoken to a lot of people as well who say that in setting your goals and especially career oriented goals you actually do need a coach to guide you through at these various stages who is a coach especially when you're trying to move up your goals in your career i uh, thank you simba a coach is not a career coach is someone who will help you move forward. Yes. A coach is someone who inspires you, who motivates you, who helps you come up with your action plan so that you they can push you to go. Yes. And it's good for me to mention that a coach is not a mentor. What, a what's, coach, the, what's the difference? <laughs> the, the, the difference is that a, a coaching is short term. Yes. A mentorship is long term. Coaching is structured. It is formal. Mentoring is not necessarily formal. It's something informal. And when you mentor someone, you have experience in that thing. But a coach does not have to have experience in your career. I see. You can be coached by someone who is not a journalist. Because basically what they are doing is they are helping you. They are giving you insight. They are guiding you into what you should be doing. So yes, it is good to get a coach. And, and, and Simba, a coach is paid something small. Mentors are not paid. Mentorship is about the relationship you have with someone. So it is true you can get a coach, but again, even as you get a coach, you got committed as a person to what you want to achieve. Who is learned in the profession? Is it the coach? or the mentor and probably that i should be asking like this when you're looking for a mentor or a coach should they be from the same same line of career that you are in a mentor should because if from in, in in terms of career growth a mentor should be in your line of business in your line of what you do yes because a mentor grows from their experience yeah for instance you there is that journal you admire that should be your mentor. But I say a career coach does not necessarily have to be someone who is in your line, in, in line of what you do. People who are experts in matters, people who are uh, current in practice of matters career. 
So now, this is a question that I think you're going to find uh, a lot more, Dr. Mary Mugo, that after six months or 12 months in a given uh, role, that many of us become comfortable with the routine of work we are expected to complete. question is going to be, how does, how does one make a change to ensure that they grow and earn more? And in your career development, is it always okay to always assume that there are greener pastures somewhere else and that's why you should be going? Sipa, you can grow even where you are, by the way. Growth but, does not yes. necessarily mean you move. No. Yes. You see, Sipa, if you've got to earn more, you've got to create value. Organizations pay for value, they pay for results, they don't pay for the time you spend. Yes. And we need to change. And of course, when you get comfortable in your routine work, you stop learning. And when you stop learning, you can't earn more. So if you need to grow and get out of your comfort zone, you've got to look for ways of creating value. And Sipa, allow me to say sometimes we appear busy in our routine work. And in my view, sometimes being busy is simply laziness. Simple people who are so busy more often than not are simply lazy. You know why Simba? It's because they are doing things that they are not supposed to be doing. And, and, and you can easily tell or decide what to do, even in your routine work as you grow. For instance, you need to know what is urgent and what is important and you do it. You need to know what is, you know, what is uh, important but not urgent. Then you can change you to do it another time. Or you need to know what is important but not urgent, and you delegate. Or even know what is not important, not urgent, and you delete. So sometimes we get carried in our routine work and start doing things that we should be deleting, things we should not be doing. Simple people are busy in their routine work doing things that don't matter. They are doing things that should be delegating. They are doing things that they should be doing another time. So in a nutshell, if you've got to earn more, you've got to create value. You create value by keeping on relearning, by keeping on upgrading your skills. So the question you should be asking yourself today is what value am I creating? It's as simple as that thing, but you earn more because you create value. Let me ask you again, Dr. Mary Mugo, who are you going to consider as, as, as a person who's grown more? Is it a person who in two to three years, let me just give it a timeline of five years, they've worked at two places, or you have this one person who's worked at one organization for those years. Who is more valuable to you? <laughs> See, but you know value is not created because you are hoping from one station to another. Is exposure no. not? Is exposure <laughs> and to different environments not uh, considered as value as well? Well, exposure is value, but you can be exposed even where you are, Simba. Yes. Be because, again, from a career point of view, you don't have to keep on moving every six months because you consider it growth. Yes. You know, even in strategy, Simba, we say that growth can be concentrated, growth can be diversified. Yeah? So gr you, you can grow where you are, you can grow elsewhere. Exposure can happen out there. That is why probably some organizations also... Uh, you know, move you from one, uh, from maybe from one thing to another. Growth can happen out there because you're doing something different. And therefore, as a person, that is why when you set goals, you need to ask yourself, you know, in your action plan, what is it that I need to do for me to grow? Do I need to look for work elsewhere? Or do I need to move out the ledger? And by the way, Simba, for you to grow where you are, you've got to play politics. Power is very important in matters career growth. Don't be lying to by anyone. It is the powerful people in courts that make decisions. They are the ones who will move you from one position to another to expose you. They are the ones who delegate to you so that you can learn more. So you've also got to play what I call functional politics. If you've got to grow. Pretty much.
I gotta give you this quote, and I'm, I'm because we have five minutes left. Uh, today, I know I'm speaking to somebody in an office, uh, Dr. Mary Mugo. I've seen this quote from time to time since you mentioned about politics and 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 how you need to sort of get the people, the, the guys in authority to realize that you're around as well. This is a quote come to work, do what you're supposed to do, and go home. I've seen it in an office, I've argued against it. Now, this is my question as well. Networking, in relation to that question. How do you achieve it properly? Yeah, Simba, your networks are very important. In fact, in career growth, your network is a resource. Yes. Because you know what, because you know what Simba, there are very few high profile jobs that are advertised it is about the people that you know that will let you know there are opportunities somewhere so you've got to keep your networks alive yes simba you've got to once in a while send a birthday text to people that you think are good in the networking in terms of uh, journalism you've got to always keep in touch you see simba the problem with many of us is we only keep in touch when we need something so you need to continue continuously keep in touch with your network you because your network is your resource and as we say many times your network is equals your network so if you've got to grow in your career you've got to be networked properly you've got to stay in touch with the people that are on the ground as they say everything happens on the ground so Networks are very, very important. Don't just work and go home and do nothing. I mean, uh, things don't just happen. Things are meant to happen. And things are not meant to happen in bed. Things are meant to happen here. This is where there's action on the ground. Pretty much. So I, I know I will repeat this in just one minute. I'm going to ask you the last question I have for you this morning. That court, I don't know. I'm just trying to remember who wrote it. Uh, they, should, they should take it out. Anyway, let's clear like this, Dr. Mary Mugo. The guys who are feeling stuck in their career growth, what do they start in terms of feeling like, in, in, in sort of in terms of feeling like they want to grow? What, what do they start in one minute, if you may? Uh, thank you, Simba. One, you must not get stuck why are you stuck that is the first question you need to ask yourself is it not possible so the to get starting stuck, point Dr. Mary Mugo. Is why are you stuck <laughs> see but why are you stuck get but, unstuck because you things know, are not because things are not clicking things, now. start doing those things because things are not working why, why should you be stuck and that is what you want to do you see in life never give up in fact, I keep saying that the only failure that you can ever have in life is when you give up. Yes. So if you think you're stuck, first of all, that is the wrong attitude. You've got to have the positive mindset that, hey, I'm not stuck. I'm going to get out of this. And of course, how you start is reevaluate yourself. Why is it that you're stuck? When you answer that question, Simba, you'll start moving. Why is it that you are stuck? answer that question and then you'll start moving dr mary mogo thank you very much for taking your time this morning to speak to us here at a metropole television you're always quite a gem every time we open the week for with you thank you simba god bless you and uh, all the best thank you very much to